Hi everyone and welcome back to the Putty Mod YouTube channel. If you like what you're seeing, please hit the subscribe button, tell a friend, hit the like button, leave a comment, all that good stuff. Anyway, that's a Koyo bearing right there. And we have something a little bit different on the bench today. And that is a Ford 8.8. It's still going inside of an S2000. This rear end is used in a lot of hot rod applications, aftermarket stuff, you know, other than uh, the Ford Explorer that they come in normally. It's used in Miata, um, you know, street rides, all kinds of different cars, this modular rear end. It's a good rear end. It's relatively inexpensive to build. Um, there's a wide variety of gear ratios. This one here is getting a 373 in it. This is a Ford Motorsport Performance uh, Ring and Pinion. It's new, of course. All of our new bearings, seals, etc. The case has been restored and painted black. As per the uh, fellow that's getting this thing, he wanted it black. So I said, yeah, I can do that for you, no problem. It is getting a Detroit True Track. And that's right back here. So it's got a posi unit in it. There's your bearing caps. These are your seals and bear, uh, carrier bearings as well. This seal right here is your axle seal. Now, take a look at that thing. This is a work of art. This is a heavy, stout, really, really nice seal that Ford puts out. This thing is quite expensive. Uh, the seals on this differential are like BMW seals. They are highly coveted by Ford, and they charge you a super-duper premium on those seals. So that one seal is like a, in the range of about $50, $60 just for one seal. But you can see it's so well made, uh, you can see where the money is at. Also, this bearing here is an exclusive to this 31 spline differential. It's a very difficult bearing to find other than at Ford. Uh, most of your kits that you see on eBay for a rebuild on these 8.8s, do not have that bearing. They have the smaller bearing that's like used on the 28 spline units. So even if it tells you it's for the 31 spline, just beware that you may not get the proper bearing and that you're probably gonna to have to go to Ford to get it. Believe it or not, Ford is a lot of times less expensive than going to the eBay route. Just a little FYI for you. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing started, get it put together, and uh, should be a fun build. It's heavy. I'll tear up my hands building the darn thing because uh, these gear teeth, oh, when I'm turning that uh, rear just to check pattern and things like that, they really cut into you. But that's the occupational hazard, I guess you could say. But still enjoy. Still have a lot of fun with it. And we're going to take this nice light aluminum housing and make it weigh a ton here. Let's get started. All right, we're getting ready to set up this bearing to get it, get it pushed. Um, Ford uses a super uh, thin shim, that's the shim right there, and uh, so you really want to try to get this thing right the first time, so you don't have to take it apart again. Bearing it set into place here, and alright, we're good. All right, we got our nice, pretty case on the uh, arbor press here, and our uh, bearing cup is lubricated. to mess up our pretty paint job here. I'm going to turn this thing around and push in our big cup. All right, we're all set up to do the, the big cup. This is a tricky push. It's not easy. It's super tight. I'm trying to get it lined up just so. Get, get that thing really centered. That feels like we got it now. Yeah, we 
bottom down. Let's check it, make sure we're good. Yeah, I like it. We're in there. Yeah. Yeah, if you get it cocked, you know, don't be afraid to go ahead and pull that cup back out and start over again. Because you don't want to push it crooked, you could crack the case. You know, anything go, you know, terribly wrong. So be patient if you're doing this yourself as a DIY and just take your time getting that cup seated just right. You can see how everything is nicely seated in there. You can see our back bearing and our inner bearing. Cups are both seated properly. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and we got our bearing on our pinion. We're going to go ahead and set up our ring gear now. All right, we got the LSD, the new LSD, and the 373 ring gear all locked up, put together. Now we're going to go ahead and press on our carrier or LSD bearings. Got our proper sized pusher. There she goes. Just to make sure we're good, we roll up the cage, make sure nothing's getting hung up. It's a pretty heavy press. Nice. All right, we're good here. Right, we'll go ahead and flip it over and do the other side. All right, we have our other new bearing here. We've got lubrication on both sides of the race. Right, go ahead and seat that. Set up. Let's see what we have. Seating it now. There we go. Good, good on the bottom. Heavy press. Rock and roll. Heavy, heavy now. Our ring gear all set up on our new LSD. Bearings are pressed into place. Our pinion is set up. Everything is lubricated. We have a slinger washer in place, bearings and such. No seals as we do not want to damage those seals while we're doing mock-up. By accident, it can happen. So I don't put the seals or bearings, side bearings or anything like that in this thing until um, uh, ready to uh, finish with the build and doing final assembly. So axle bearings will go in at that time, seals will go in at that time, uh, pinion seal will go in at that time, distance piece and all that will all go in and uh, for final assembly. But right now we're just doing mock-up. We want to see where we're at. All right, I have the pinion set in here for mock-up. I got a nice drag on this. But anyway, we have the pinion set. Good preload on here. Now we'll go ahead and put that carrier in. Now here comes the fun part. Pressing this thing in. Heavy, heavy. All right, this is our first setup. This is our current pattern and it's not good. So I'm getting it apart now and we're gonna get that shim out of there, which like I told you, is a real son of a gun to do because these oh. bearings are so close it's really difficult to do without damaging that bearing, but we're going to do it. And uh, I just changed out this shim here, change out my preload and the adjustment that's necessary for dropping that pinion lower, because that's what we're going to do. We're going to drop that pinion down, see what we get. All right, I was able to separate the bearing from the pinion. Like I said, very difficult to do. Uh, very easy to destroy that bearing without the right tools. It's a heavy press and there's almost no room between that race and the bearing, uh, the pinion head. So it's it's really, really hard to do. All right, we're getting ready to press it together now. And I want to do it a different way this time, just for some variety. Let's go have some fun. We have the carrier back in. Our new shims are in place to adjust our backlash. 
and this is ARP grease. This gives you a precision torque setting and also prevents any galling from happening. All right, we changed that shim and unfortunately it was in the wrong direction. The manual is not always correct. Well, anyway, oh, okay, star of the show, what are you doing? I am trying to do something here. All right, we're back here. Have at it again. I changed the shim. This is my third shot now. Separating that bearing. Like I said, it's not an easy thing to do. We're going to go ahead and put this thing together. Hopefully, we got it right on the third shot. We always say the third try is a charm. We're going to find that out right now. Up. Got it seated. The average person, even the average shop, really, they try to separate this thing. It ain't happening. A lot of guys will grind out an old bearing so they can slip it on and off. I don't like doing that because there is difference, and maybe it's just enough to to knock that pattern off. So I'd rather use the, the correct bearing that's actually going to go into that rear end. So I know everything's dead nuts right on the money. Third time was not the charm. Have another shim here. Maybe the fourth time will be the charm. But that pattern's still crap. I got a bit of a grinding sound in one direction on the gear. There you go. I had a grinding sound on the coast side of this gear um, when I had a better pattern. So good pattern. Noisy gear, lousy pattern, no noisy gear, smooth and quiet. I am going to move this one more time. This will be, I think, the fifth time I've moved this pinion. And um, definitely flirting with disaster when it comes to doing that. It's getting that uh, bearing off that pinion is no easy task and like i said having the right tools really help most shops will send you down the road they don't want to even want to mess with it it's just out of their uh, wheelhouse they don't want to play with it they know that they're going to get into a can of worms and uh, they just don't want to deal with this and transmissions gearboxes is like um, going to your general practitioner for a heart problem and um, they like mm, no i'm sorry you got to go see a heart specialist we are back with the ford rear end this is our fifth and final setup. This is our backlash. Let's see, we get a good photo there. There you go, you're at eight and a half thousandths. We're between eight and a half and nine thousandths around the gear consistent, which is great. Our pattern is pretty good and it will definitely wear in because this is a brand new gear, but you can see we got a lot better contact now uh, it took a long time to get to this place, but we got here finally and it looks good Great, so we're gonna go ahead and blow it apart and do final assembly Okay, we have the pinion set new pinion seal pinion nut and our preload is right at 21 inch pounds Which is just perfect Okay, we're gonna go ahead and set the axle seals and the axle bearings Next, why this thing is still fairly light. Final thing will be putting the LSD and ring gear back in since that is super heavy. All right, we are finished putting in the axle seals and axle bearings. This is a heavy press. We have specialty tooling to do the job so we don't mess up a $60 seal. And uh, it's not really easy to do. You don't want to drive these things in with a mallet. You really want to use a press so you can get a nice, smooth push. Nothing beat in. Uh, you have a chance of distorting or damaging that seal, and it's very expensive if you do. This is our uh, shims. They're placed in there with a little bit of grease behind them. It kind of acts like a glue, keep them in place. But with me knocking this thing around, I, I displaced one. I just put it back in. All right, we're getting ready to put the carrier LSD ring gear gimmick into this 8.8. .8. And uh, the quality goes in before the name goes on. There's our pattern. After spinning this thing and doing final assembly, it really came out nice. Got a perfect backlash here. Right between 8 
and nine thousandths all the way around. Spot on. All right, our retaining cylinder's in there nice and snug, ready for break-in, seals. All we have to do now is put the cover on it. I believe he sent me a set of stub axles for the kit that he's using to install this in his S2000. Go ahead and get these inserted. And uh, I gotta get the cover restored. I have not done that yet. Good job, kitty. We're all finished, right? Very good to you. Oh, excellent. What are we gonna tell the nice people that are watching our video? Thanks for watching, subscribe, tune in, hit the like button, all that good stuff. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. We'll get the next one up on the bench. Stay tuned. Good job, kitty.